Let's face it, D&D is king right now. Just look at these numbers. Those are big numbers. And can any other TTRPG boast about their fine selection of movies? No, you don't count Alien and Conan. Your movies came out first. While 5e is taking the world by storm thanks to the likes of Stranger Things and Critical Role, I wanted to highlight other systems that deserve their chance in the spotlight and perhaps a spot at your table. I wanted to specifically highlight other systems that evoke different genres, tones, feels, and settings. So without further ado, here is my top 10 tabletop role-playing games that aren't 5e, in no particular order. Number 1. Old School Essentials Have you ever thought to yourself, I want to play D&D the way it was made back in the 70s, but don't want to dust off the ancient tomes of Gygax and don't want to pull out a magnifying glass to read that ridiculously small word size? Old School Essentials delivers a pure and good product of the way D&D was once made. You have the classic fare of dwarves and elves doubling as class and race. You have each class having their own special saving throws. You see the system of D&D ages past, but instead of being hidden away by obscure and broken text, this product cleans everything up and streamlines the process in finding exactly what you need and clearly stating its intent goals. OSC is the cleanest rendition of basic D&D to date, and if you were looking to play D&D the old school way, then this product is well worth the view. Especially because you can download a basic free copy of the rules right now. Number 2. Dungeon Crawl Classics Do you want magic that truly feels magical and not mechanical? Do you want the fighters to truly excel at their martial prowess? Do you want randomness, chaos, and new sets of dice to throw? Dungeon Crawl Classics delivers a straightforward system of classic fantasy that turns it on its head with a unique system of delivering wacky spells, mighty deeds of arms, and luck affecting a character's destiny. In DCC, you don't simply declare the spell you're going to cast, and the result happens. No, no, no. That's too boring. In this system, each and every spell has the potential to be some weak mundane version of itself, or if the stars align, turning into a cataclysmic result that can warp reality. Sounds cool, right? So how do the martial classes contend then? Well, they stay online, large and in charge thanks to dice being added to their attacks, having extended crit ranges, and the ability to pull off sweet moves that everyone else can only dream of. If that all wasn't enough, take a look at these critical hit tables. Table after table with hundreds of results. What more could you ask for? Check out the free DCC rules to get you started on a dungeon crawl experience that is anything but ordinary. Before we move on with the rest of the video, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my patrons over on Patreon. If you want to help me and help this channel grow, then subscribe to my Patreon and you will get a collection of maps made by me as well as a monthly magazine full of goodies for your favorite tabletop role playing games. Number 3. Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea Playing in high fantasy worlds with elves and dwarves is all well and good, but sometimes you want to step back and enjoy a gritty world grounded in a harsh reality. Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea, or Ash for short, delivers on a Conanian world and feel. No fantasy races to be played here. You all play as humans, facing the harsh reality of the Hyperborean expanse. The world building is fantastic, with it being humans from our Earth being blasted to a rock in the middle of space, now left in an alien world, the humans struggle against not only themselves, but the magic monsters and aliens that plague the land. The gameplay evokes a style of pulpy and gritty play, and each class truly shines in their own astonishing way. The frothing berserker fights with unmatched ferocity, the cryomancer summons icicles to stab foes with, the rune carver spills their own blood to cast off some spells, and the bard? Well, actually the bard does bard things to help out the party. Good job, Bard. Ash calls to those that want that classic fantasy feel, and it certainly delivers on that promise. Number 4, Call of Cthulhu. Stepping away from fantasy, we dive into something far more horrifying, the real world. Call of Cthulhu delivers an experience like no other on this list. Taking up the role of everyday people in extraordinary circumstances, you are faced with the terrifying truth behind the world the mythos that seeps into reality, and the people that are plagued by it. While the most common setting of Call of Cthulhu takes place in the 1920s, the great part about this system is that it truly does work in any time period. Want to play as Roman soldiers uncovering secret plots in the heart of Rome? Got you covered. 
Want to take a jaunt down Victorian England and discover who Jack the Ripper really is and why they did it? It's there. Want to play in a modern setting with cell phones now being used by the alien creatures that seek to control us? Go for it. Cthulhu works incredibly well in any time period because the premise is always the same. You are a normal human being thrown into a terrible situation and you must simply try your best to get out with both your life and your sanity. Number 5. Mothership Taking a slight detour into sci-fi, I am happy to introduce you to Mothership. Mothership is a relatively rules-light system, with the emphasis being on getting your unfortunate characters to reverse into the unknown. This game does not take it easy on these characters, as they are but frail folk who are prone to damage, stress, sanity, and the horrors of space. The major draw for me with Mothership is the quick intensity of any situation that occurs. Charging headlong into the unknown is a surefire way to get your team of scientists, soldiers, and teamsters killed, but oftentimes you are pressed into action anyway, as there is always pressing issues. Do you have enough oxygen on board to survive the trip? Can you scavenge supplies to fix your crashed ship on a deserted world? Will your team's android drive you insane with its lack of empathy? Couple this with a scary combat system that will leave your characters hurting for days on end. It's no wonder that Mothership can evoke the true horrors of space. Number 6. Forbidden Lands Whenever someone tells you not to do something in a game, you always have the edge to do it anyway, right? So when someone tells you that a land is forbidden, it is just yearning to be explored. Forbidden Lands is a D6 heavy system that encourages so much from the player characters. Thanks to its incredibly well thought out systems for not just combat, but also for the exploration and social interactions, you are sure to find and excel at showing off your amazing talents. Not only is there a heavy emphasis on those three pillars of play, but there is a great deal of customization in the development of those characters. As they earn XP, they can choose how they spend it, either attaining new skills and becoming jacks of all trades, or specializing in their skills, talents, and magics to become experts in their craft. This system couples with the in-depth exploration rules that truly immerse you as you explore the forbidden lands, conversing with its denizens, and fighting its monsters. This game system packs so many unique and fantastic systems within it, such as social conflict, stronghold management, and more. I can't recommend Forbidden Lands enough. Number 7. Lancer Do you like mechs? I like mechs. Who doesn't like mechs? Lancer is a unique game system on this lineup as it's essentially broken up into two different games. The first being a rules-like narrative focus on the pilots. Your mech pilots will be getting up to all sorts of shenanigans which they are more than likely well equipped to handle. The second part of the game is the mech combat, which sees us taking up combat on a board that is not too dissimilar to tabletop war games like Warhammer. The draw of this combat is the sheer variety in options afforded to the players. You have your standard chain gatling guns, assault rifles, and shield toting behemoths, but there is so much more than that, with some of my favorite standouts being flamethrowers, arc throwers, and systems to hack other mechs. You start off small, but as you advance through missions, you are presented a plethora of options to ensure that there is always something new waiting for you. The sheer variety in mech builds and combat structures allows this game to feel organic, and makes you feel truly awesome when you get a pilot to reach their full potential. Number 8. Kids on Bikes Listen, not every game on this list needs to have an incredibly in-depth rulebook or come with its own unique world-building fluff. Sometimes it's good to just sit down, build a simple character, and throw them into an adventure at hand. Kids on Bikes is simple enough. When you create a character, you take the dice chain from the D4 all the way up to the D20 and place each dice into a stat that you desire, with the D4 being the weakest and the D20 being the strongest. Your stats in this game are Brains, Brawn, Fight, Flight, Charm, and Grit, with each affecting exactly what you might think they would. During the course of play, challenges will present themselves, and you must overcome the difficulty challenge. Now you can see why this simple system may have some complexity to it. If the challenge rating is a 10, then of course the characters with a D4 and a D6 simply can't pull it off, which is why a well-balanced party will do wonders. The name Kids on Bikes is misleading as you can run this game with teens and adults as well. I find the system is great for evoking the feel of popular media in game form, such as Stranger Things and It. The system comes with helpful advice on how to run adventures, and also has several spin-offs of different varieties to really get the creative juices flowing. Number 9, Mouse Ritter. I've covered some old school renaissance systems, how about we give some new school a time to shine as well? Mouse Ritter is a swords and whiskers RPG with an abundance of cuteness as well as lethality. 
Taking up the role of mice, your players will explore a world that is far bigger than themselves and tackle challenges only the bravest of mice could possibly muster. While the system is light, the adventures can be heavy, as tackling other mice or creatures larger than yourselves can be a deadly affair. The intricacies of the mechanics are made evident with the character sheet, which creates a fun and engaging management system of what you have equipped and what you have in your inventory. As you are just tiny mice, you can't carry much, but that's what your allies, hirelings, and warbands are for. As you level up, either from retrieving valuables or acting selflessly, your mice grow stronger, able to tackle even greater challenges to come. The rules also come with an example hex crawl area to adventure and rollable tables for making your own adventures as well. Sharpen your whiskers and blades and set off for an adventure of a mouse's lifetime. Honorable Mentions With a top 10 list, I'm unfortunately forced to leave out many game systems. At this point, there are thousands of TTRPGs and I just can't cover them all. But I did want to give a few shoutouts before the final reveal. Pathfinder 1 and 2e The Pathfinder systems are fantastic for what they do. They deliver upon us a system that allows you to truly build a unique character with a plethora of feats and abilities provided. There are so many permutations of ancestry, class, feats, spells, and more that you can create untold millions of unique characters and still find something new thanks to Paizo's regular release of amazing new content. While Pathfinder 1 stays more in line with D&D's 3rd edition, Pathfinder 2e is a whole new take on the system thanks to its block action economy allowing you to mix and match your actions each and every round. The reason I didn't put them on this list is because I believe they hit the same tone and feel of gameplay as D&D, with the difference really leaning into character and class design being far grander experience in Pathfinder. If you are looking for a D&D experience but with far greater character options and more concrete rules, then definitely check out the Pathfinder systems. Land of Eam Land of Eam is a light-hearted romp through a dystopian fantasy world. This whole system is a fresh take on the adventuring experience from the ground up. This D12 heavy system sees our intricate characters traversing a harsh world, but thanks to the interactive leveling system, you are able to outfit your PCs with features that enhance combat exploration and social interaction to a delightful degree. The class features add a fun twist to the leveling experience, as you pick between multiple choices each time, fleshing out the style of play that most suits you. One of the standout features of this game is the conflict system. Just because you come across a dangerous foe, it doesn't mean you have to resort to combat. But, for as lighthearted as the system appears to be on the surface, there is a layer of depth and danger that I wholeheartedly enjoy. The reason I didn't put this on my list isn't because the system is bad. In fact, far from it. I thoroughly enjoy the world building aspect of this game with my players. The real reason it's not on here is simply because the full system isn't out yet. But thanks to its massive success on Kickstarter, I know the main rules will find themselves in everyone's laps soon. Number 10, Vampire the Masquerade. Sometimes it's good to sit down and not be the hero. Sometimes it's good to sit down and play a game where you realize there is more than just right or wrong. Vampire the Masquerade plops you into the real world, but instead of viewing the world in our own light, we instead see the seedy underbelly of a society filled with vampires. Now these aren't your twilight, shiny, and melodramatic vampires. No, these are sun-fearing, blood-drinking, and supernaturally powered vampires that stalk the night. The beauty of the system is seeing the struggles that come with vampire life. How will you get your blood to drink? What vampire clan turmoil is going on? What other horrific monsters stalk the night in your city? This is an incredibly strong narrative game, focused on the characters and their nightly struggles in a world we all believe to be mundane. But as the curtain gets drawn on the nightly society, it only opens even more avenues of amazing roleplay to seep into our tables. So that's my top 10 list of tabletop role-playing games that aren't d and I am genuinely curious to hear your thoughts. I know that there's a lot of games out there that I missed, and I want to hear about them. I want to experience new game systems. I want to show off other game systems to other people. So tell me all about that down below. Share your thoughts about other game systems that you love, because there's a lot, and I know that a lot of people want to branch out. You need to step out of your comfort zone and try new things. I really hope that all of you watching this and at least consider trying out a different game system because, like I said, there's a lot of different tones, feels, themes, and settings that sometimes D&D just can't provide. And that's what I love about these other game systems. They allow us to sit down with our friends and play a game, but even though we are playing a tabletop role-playing game, it's a whole new experience. 
So tell me and everyone all about your favorite tabletop role-playing games down below because I would love to see it. But that's going to do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for listening. And thank you to my amazing patrons. You guys are absolutely incredible. Thank you so very much. And I cannot wait to see you all in the next one.